Welcome to episode seven of our series on SRE and DevOps. I'm Liz Fong Jones, a site reliability engineer at Google, where I teach Google Cloud customers how to build and operate reliable services. Hmm. Where have you been, Seth? I'm Seth, I'm a developer advocate. I'm sorry I'm late. I was up all night dealing with these alerts from these systems. <clears throat> that was just a really hectic night. Oh, that's the worst when that happens. And what experience were your users having? Were they happy or were they uh, impacted by the alerts? <sighs> Honestly, that was the most frustrating part. I'd get paged about this single server that had slow or low disk space or low network bandwidth, but only a small percentage of queries were affected. And by the time I got there, the load balancer had already routed traffic away, so there was nothing for me to do. Sounds like you have too many alerts, and they're not doing you any good at actually catching problems affecting real users. And that leaves you really, really tired when something does actually break. So let's see how we can maybe reduce some of that noise. So my partner and I would greatly appreciate getting to sleep through the night unless things are you know, actually on fire. But I'm worried, too, because I've heard rumors that the rest of my team is actually ignoring alerts and putting their phones in do not disturb mode because none of the alerts are actionable, or very few of them are actionable. And I'm worried that that's going to put our business at risk in the event of a real outage. Yeah, so you have service level indicators and service level objectives. Remember last time? Yeah, we do. We have an automated system that verifies that uh, you can log in, you can add things to your shopping cart, and you can check out. And our service level indicator is defined based on whether that probe, that process, succeeds without error and whether it completes quickly enough in our time frame. And then our service level objective, or SLO, is that integrated over, say, the past 30 days. And the SLI must be satisfied for 99.9% .9 or three nines of all of the probes. Great. So you're measuring your performance and what users are experiencing, but are you using that to alert? Wait. You want me to add more alerts? I thought, I, I want to sleep more. <laughs> well, yes, but we'll eventually wind up turning off the redundant alerts that are measuring potential causes of problems rather than corresponding necessarily to actual unhappy users. So remember, what we're trying to do is make our users happy. So by using the SLO measurements to decide whether our users are experiencing actual symptoms of pain, then we can use that to guide us, and everything else is extraneous. OK, that makes sense. So let's take an example. You said you wanted to have your SLI satisfied 99.9% .9 over 30 days. So that means that you have an error budget of 43 minutes per 30 days of 100% outage, or potentially longer if you had a partial brownout, right? Right, that math sounds familiar. OK, so you'd want to find out and be able to intervene to put the system back to correctness relatively quickly if you are expending error budget far more quickly than the error budget indicates. For instance, you'd clearly have a problem if you spent a quarter of your error budget for the whole month within two hours either by being hard down for 10 minutes or by having a partial brownout of 10% of your probes for those two hours. Well, I see. And if that pattern continued for the next few hours or even minutes, I could potentially wind up spending my entire error budget for the quarter or the year. Exactly. But we can't put it on a hair trigger, or else it will falsely alert us when we have a blip for two minutes, rather than something that winds up repeating itself within the next two hours. So we can have some situations where a partial brownout wouldn't necessarily endanger our error budget. Yeah, I mean, I've had enough noisy pages to want to avoid that happening ever again. But I think I can spot a small hole in your logic. Like, what if I deployed some code that introduced, say, a small performance regression, something maybe half of a percent of my probes will constantly fail? I'd never catch it by looking for too many failures in a window of hours. That would be indistinguishable from other noise in the system. Yes, you're exactly correct. So we also need a slow burn alert to track down over the past week if we're exceeding our error budget at an, an acceptable rate. For instance, we could check whether more than 0.15% of queries were failing when we're only allowed 0.1%. And we could raise a lower priority ticket that someone could look at during business hours once we are sufficiently confident. So as I understand it, we need both fast burn and slow burn alerts to provide a feedback loop on our SLO and make sure that we're fixing real issues that are affecting real users. Exactly. And Stackdriver SLO from Google Cloud can help you by automatically determining and showing to you what your error budget is, how much of it you've spent, and alerting you when it's in danger. And once you've set up these SLO-based alerts, you can turn off all of the noisy alerts because you're only getting alerts about the high importance problems that are actually causing user impact. OK, but how do I actually find the problems in my system so that I feel confident turning off the no longer needed alerts? I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to lose data or be unable to fix issues now. That sounds like an excellent subject for us to discuss on the next episode about observability of distributed systems. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Please remember to like and subscribe below.